In this lesson, we're going to go over the different elements that HTML5 uses to help you structure your page. You'll see that I've created a very simple page, and we're not getting into any fancy styling yet. Um, and it's just got several segments in here, and you can see it's basically just text with a copy right at the bottom. There are a couple of links in here. The links are on page links, so they will link to a spot lower in the page. When we do this, we're actually using what's called a named anchor. And there's a named anchor here at appearance, a named anchor at temperament, and a named anchor at history. And so when I click those links, they will scroll down in the page to bring whatever I have as the named anchor, anchor towards the top of the page. So let's take a look at this. And this is something I want you to do before you hand in your own work. You should upload it or even from Dreamweaver, or you can sample it before it goes up. But you should view the page source. And I'm using Firefox, and this is how I'm going to grade your papers. Now I've made this a little larger by using the Control Plus um, command to make it easier to read. And I'm going to review some of this you've already gone through, but we have our doc type. We're declaring the HTML document. The opening tag is here. The end tag is all the way to the bottom. And we've declared that the language is English. And then in our head tags, we have some meta information. This is just the standard US care set. And we've put the title for the page, Vouvier de Flanders Dirty Beards. And you'll notice it cuts it off at the end of Vouvier de Flanders, but if you mouse over it, you will get the Bouvier de Flanders dirty beards to show up. Let me actually show that to you. If I mouse over this, you should see the entire title that I put in there show up. Then in the body, we have several different structures in HTML that help us to organize the page. Now all of the content that will display on the page is actually in the body. So all of this is in the body text. I have everything in a div tag. A div tag is a generic structure that just sort of groups items together. I've given it a name of container. This is an ID. IDs will uniquely identify segments of your page. When you have an ID, it lets you do things with it that will only, and the reason that it's unique is because it's going to be used for navigation or programming or styling. And with the ID here of container, we're going to come back to this assignment later and we're going to modify it using cascading style sheets. By having everything inside of a container, it will let me set a width for the page and center it on si inside of the um, browser win window. So I have a div, which is sort of generic, and it's named ID, or its ID is container, which will allow me to do some specific styling of it later. Then inside of my div, I have a header. The header acts like a masthead, and this is different than a heading, which would be like H1, H1 heading, and it really is showing you that it's the top of the section that you're in, which could be an ID or a div, or um, it could be an aside. You can have more than one header in your page. And so I have a heading, H1, Bouvier's, AKA otherwise known as Dirty Beards. There's actually a Dirty Beards magazine for fans of the Bouvier. Then I have a nav tag with a role of navigation. The role of navigation is part of usability compliance for people with disabilities. It's to help people who are using screen readers understand what each area of the document is. When we set up a nav section, and a nav is a specific type of section used for navigation, we set up the navigation in there, usually in an unordered list, unless it needs to be in an order, like in a breadcrumb, in which case you can use an ordered list. And here I have 
links and when you have the hashtag here in front of the link name that means that it's linking to someplace further down the page. That's another way that the ID is used. So we have an anchor here with an ID of appearance and that should only exist once. That's why we're using an ID. So when we use the hashtag and appearance it's looking for an anchor with an ID of appearance on the same page. Appearance with a capital A is what actually appears on the page and it would take you to appearance when clicked. We also have another link to temperament and a link to history. And that closes my unordered list and it closes my navigation. And it also closes the header because my title, my heading one, and these three links are all in the header of my document. After the header, I have an article. Now an article is a very special type of section because an article is something that should be able to be taken in its total. You should be able to cut it out and put it in any other web page and have it still make total sense. They're frequently used with RSS feeds, which stands for Real Simple Syndication. So if you have something that's an article, you could potentially make it something that other people could sub subscribe to. And then we have sections inside of our article. And our sections, each one has an ID of, or a uh, heading tag of H2, because really the main heading is Bouvier de Flanders, and then each section here is a subheading, so this should be an H2, not an H1. You're allowed to make them an H1, but they just don't make sense that way. So we have the section about appearance, and that also, again, has the named anchor here so that it, we can click and go to it. And so we have a paragraph on appearance, and that ends that section. We have a section on temperament, again, with a named anchor, and it talks about the Bouvier's temperament, and that closes that section. Then we have a section on history, which talks a little bit about the history of the Bouvier then that section closes and the article closes. I have an aside, role equals complementary. This is additional information that is a tangent to the main article. And it talks here about how I got my first Bouvier, a couple of paragraphs on that, and the dogs that I have now. And then I close the aside. For the footer role, this is content info and small has a special meaning in HTML5. It's the fine print. And so that, this is my copyright symbol, so that's copyright written by me for the year 2014. That closes my footer, closes the div, which is my container, closes the body, which is where the content of the HTML document is, closes the HTML tag. So you're going to do a very similar type of document where you're going to share with us something that you know something about put in several bits of information, have an aside, there will be specifications in Canvas, but you're going to do something really similar to this. And then I want you to also go out and I want you to go to, I've got a link in here to the HTML5 Outliner. And I want you to go to the HTML5 Outliner because our structure and our H tags actually create an outline of our content. And it's going to take a second to open. You can always just Google it. HTML5 Outliner. And this is probably the most popular one. And what I'm going to do is after I've uploaded my page, I'm going to copy this. I don't want to include the hashtag with history. I want the whole page, not just that section. So I'm going to copy this, and I'm going to paste that here, and choose Outline This. Oh, and we have an error here. Let's try that again. 
Oh, that's because I'm in my view source. Don't want to do that. I want to be in the actual page. Paste that in there. Hit outline this. And I'll show you I've got an untitled section largely because I have that div with the container. But it shows you a basic outline of how my page is structured. When we're structuring our HTML properly, you'll be able to use a tool like this and it should give you a good view of how your document is structured. To prove that you've checked yours this way, I'd like you to take a picture of it. Now you can use the snipping tool, Mac has a tool like it. Personally, I tend to use Jing. Jing is a free program by TechSmith. You can just Google it and install it. And that will let me select an area, take a picture, name it, and save it. And then I have a file for this class. I'm going to hit save and close. Now I want to show you how you would embed that into your assignment. It's pretty simple. Um, you can actually just put it in as an additional attachment and Canvas is being kind of slow tonight. So there will be a assignment here for you and it's going to be an assignment, it will be labs, actually be lab. O2 and I'm going to give you a place to hand this in. So when you go to hand this in, it'll be it'll have specifications for you later. I'm going to have two things for you to hand in. You're going to hand in a link and you're going to have a file upload. so that when you go to hand this in, what you should see, again you'll have the specification for what you need to do, but you'll see your assignment here for lab 2, and to submit the assignment you'll put your website URL here, but to add the image You'll select your image and um, put in your website URL, which would be this. And then you should be able to submit your assignment, and that will submit both the URL and the image. So that's how you're going to hand in your homework. It, sometimes you're going to have an image where you have to hand in to show that you did your error checking, but you are always going to have a website URL. So that's how you'll hand it in, and there will be um, specific directions under Lab02 as far as what I want you to include for your content.